Hi, how are you doing? Hope you are well and safe and having a great day. My day's just begun really, it's uh, bright and early, the sun's shining, I've just uh, pegged the washing out on the line. You can see it in the, reflect in the reflection here, actually. Uh, so, nice early start for me. Yesterday, I was working in Rebel 4, and I wanted to do um, a watercolour painting, but with pencil work over the top of it. And I've done this style a few times before, but uh, well over a year or so ago. So I thought I'd have a go of doing it in Rebel. Never done it in Rebel before. And um, it's a really nice technique because you get a very stylized look with these soft watercolor washers and the sharp pencil lines. I had a go at um, taking a watercolor brush and turning it into a watercolor pencil. And basically all I did was uh, reduce the size of the, pe of the brush, actually. I didn't do anything more than that. Perhaps should, I should have a go at uh, making something a bit more custom. The idea was I could uh, draw with a pencil and it would still react with uh, watercolours uh, and other colours that was already on the paper. Maybe that might have worked with a pencil. I did use a, um, a pencil to do all the sharp work after, but I put that on a different layer. So I didn't actually try to see if that would work with a pencil. Maybe I should have a go at that. Anyway, this is what I come up with. I really like it. Putting the washers on first saves you a lot of time, a lot of work, and then you can get in with the pencil work to produce this stylized piece. So uh, I'll stop talking now and get straight into the video. I'm working in Rebel 4 today. I'm gonna to do a watercolor painting with a pencil, colored pencils over the top of it. Uh, I thought that'd be quite, I've not done that before, so I thought that'd be quite interesting. I'm using uh, paper size. I've gone for the A3, uh, which is a decent size, and I'm changing the dots per inch to 300, which gives us an overall pixel size of 4,961 by 3,508. So that's a good size. Um, paper, I think I'll just use aquarelle i'm going to use the aquarelle paper uh, and default color i'm not messing about at all i'm just using uh standard stuff there we go click on ok and our canvas is being made there we go and image wise i need to um drag an image in so I've got my little reference image here. Go to window and you can toggle on reference image if you haven't used that before. And the easiest way to get an image into it is to just drag that into there like that. Boom. And size it up. That's the scene I'm going to be doing. Uh, I got this picture off Pixabay because I've just used up all of my source material. Uh, I'm fed up of looking at it. So I went to Pixabay and um, came up with this. I'll put a link in the description where you can get this image if you want to paint along. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. Uh, probably put it up here somewhere like that. Uh, Just resize my canvas a little bit. There we go. Actually, I might just put that, or if I do that, it's gonna insert it into there. And then I can click on layers when I want it. That's not a bad idea, actually. Um, it gives me more space to have a slightly bigger canvas. Right, let's start. I'm going to begin with a, a color wash. So I'm choosing Aquarelle. I want, I think, a mop. I know we've got a nice mop somewhere. Where's it gone? I mean, acrylic brushes, not going to find it there. Mop, that's it. Um, Size-wise, we're at 90%. And I'm just looking at the source photo and 
I'm just going to kind of pop in some colour. This is just going to make, doing this will make it uh, so much easier and faster to come up with a, a finished, finished painting. So a little blue in there. I'm touching this really light and we'll go for a sandy color. Just looking at the photo, picking up those colors, generally getting them. I'll put the waterfall there. Generally um, following the scene, no sketching needed at this point. Get a bit warmer here because um, this will throw the foreground forward. Nice orange. And I can use the eraser to lift colours out if I want. Then diffuse together there. In fact, you know what? I'm going to go right the way across that like that, and then t swap this round. I might, you know what? I'm going to move this waterfall. I'll change it to the photo slightly because it's pretty much in the middle, and I want it more on um, the rule of thirds. I think that might be a good idea. And I'll put it this side because it sort of takes you into the waterfall, the way it's leaning, takes you into the pa painting instead of out of it. Let's just pick that colour up and fill that in a bit. There. So I think that's kind of got the initial washes down. Something automatically, it's probably saving, auto saving there. I was thinking where I can put a bit more color. No, I don't like that. Let's get rid of that. Come on, go. Is it going to go? I'm continually, there we go. I was continually tapping the control R there. I think I've gone a bit too far. Let's just put that back in. Um, that green, I didn't like it because it was a bit too green. I prefer warm greens, i.e. greens with yellow in or greens with blue in tend not to go directly for actual green green. See, that's a kind of a blue green. Uh, and I think that will do for the initial wash. I'm liking that. Um, go to layers for a second and create a new layer. And this is going to be my drawing layer. Click this one, lock it. That's done with. Back to layer two. And I will go back to the reference image. So you can uh, see that. I'm not using that reference image. It's too small for me. That's really there just to help you sort of get an idea what I'm doing. I've got it on a separate screen. So I'm going to pencils now. And I'm using them as colored pencils. Do like an HB um, or if I use a watercolor this is an interesting idea if I use say a liner and make it really small what's that see that would have the effect 
of um, water to it. That all go out. Not particularly. What about if I had water to this brush? That's nice. That would be like painting on a sort of a damp paper by adding a little bit of water. So it's like a coloured pencil. Go with the strong. I just want. I'm just just testing before I start. Uh, look how that's now running to that water. Like so, that is a proper watercolor pencil. So basically, I've taken a line or two. Uh, <clears throat> actually, that size is quite big. What happened there? Wasn't what I was drawing with before. Then now that got that size all of a sudden. Taking that to about five. Oh, I'm not on line of two, I'm on the round. Go back to line of two, that's it. And I'd set it to two. For the water at 22%. Cool. Right, can I uh, clear a layer? Not that I can't. Maybe if I just press the delete key, will that do it? Yeah, that's done it. So that's how I'm going to use um, my pencils. I'm using a line of two set uh, really small and I can start sketching. So uh, where shall we start around the waterfall, I suppose? Let's get a color. Oops. Pencil. And I'm assuming I'm going to be able to wet over these. I need to be a bit, a bit, a bit bigger. I'm just wondering if that needs to be just a, a tad bigger. Not quite that big. How's that look? Yeah, number three. Or sort brush size of three. I suppose I ought to just sort of, before I start working in detail, just get in some uh, shapes. Nice thing I've got this watercolour underneath. I don't need to, um, I don't need to draw over the all of the painting. I've got scope to leave areas nice and blank. There we go. I'm going to speed this up now because obviously I'm just going to sketch in the whole thing and I'll be back in less than a minute probably. So here's my initial sketch finished. Uh, I've lifted out a little bit of colour. Oh, I've done most of my sketch. <laughs> no, I've done a lot of the sketch on the underpainting. Never mind, because I went out and lifted some uh, colour. If you're observant, you'd have probably seen that. But I'm going to, I'm going to just lift out a little bit more, uh, just on these rocks here, which is unfortunate because that means I'm going to have to kind of draw them in again. Um, not all of not all of the. Well, in fact, you know what? That's a bit, a bit too much. That's just. Uh, 
Let's, uh, I'm actually going to select the eraser. Uh, I'll make the size a bit smaller. Do it this way. because I didn't want uh, quite so much lifted out. I didn't want to take the whole thing out. This is how I did the uh, around the big stone there as well. Um, and I just want to say here that this is exactly how I would do it if I was painting a real watercolour. I wouldn't use uh, gouache or anything like that. You don't need to. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot uh, remove colour or paint in watercolour because you can. All you have to do is damp it with a wet brush and uh, uh, press a towel on it. And, and it will lift any colour that you want. So that's what I'm doing here. Fortunately, I have screwed up the drawing. It does give it a nice, soft, diffused look, though, which I quite like. So I'll probably... Well, I will leave it. I was going to say I'll probably leave it. I will leave it. Just lift a few more, just highlights. In the odd place, I'm just looking at the stones, lifting out some of the colour I put in previously. Try not to do what I did. I could put another wash on that as well, on the this area, on this big stone. I will do before I start colouring in again. And maybe just a little bit more. I'm going to move that face a little bit higher there. So I've just indicated that by lifting a little bit of an highlight out there. And we can put the odd highlight in. Maybe. And I could come back later and do some more if I want. Definitely on here. That's it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, I'm going to lock this layer again now. <laughs> I unlocked it. Oh, no, I'm not. Before I do that, I'm just going to get go back to my mop. Uh, choose a, a light colour and just... Oh, oh, it's still locked. Just a little wash. A bit warmer. Back over that. It just means it's going to make it so much easier for me when I um, come to do the pencil work. In fact, I might, before I do the pencil work, I'm going to create another layer and just add, this is going to be uh, a little bit of color, dark shade there. Just less drawing to do. Just flip me stylus over. Start out like that. I've changed the composition quite a lot, as you can see. Uh, got a little run going down there. That's quite cool. Because wow, it gives it that really nice watercolour effect. I think I'm sort of there. I could put stronger colour in there. Maybe a blue-green. Uh, like that tone. When I say here, there, I mean just here. And again, just sharpen it off a bit. I've stretched this stone uh, because obviously I've moved the uh, waterfall. So uh, things have, have changed somewhat. And then a kind of warmer colour here. Hello. Uh, do I like that? Those runs are quite, quite radical now, aren't they? I lift them out. What should I do? Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna take them out. I 
first I thought they looked cool, but um, too many. Better. That'll do. I think I'm ready to uh, start. Or oh, maybe, maybe I, would, I can just see. I can see all these darks, and it'll take me ages if I use a pencil. So I'm just gonna go in here and put a few of these in, and we've got sort of a lighter colour here. That's it. Like that. That's it. That'll do. I can just sort of flick in. I'm using the eraser just to lift out some of these. I think I'm going to lock this layer as well. Uh, and then create a new layer to start my action. I'm going to try and keep it fairly open, I think. And then work down uh, to less open. So let's go for green. And the uh, thing about the etching is it takes a lot longer than the um, than the painting. It's just the nature of the beast. So I thought if I keep it fairly open, there's less etching to do. And I want it to look like a pencil drawing, to be honest. I don't want it to look... Um, Like a watercolor painting. This is brand new to me doing it like I've never done anything like this before. Um, I've done pencil sketching on top of watercolor lots of times, but not with big open um, pencil marks like this. I usually do it much tighter. I thought I'd keep it open just just to change the style up a little bit. Give us a different style. I'm liking what we're getting so far. I really am. And I can always add much tighter, denser etching like that. I think it needs it. So I'm looking at the, the source photo and I'm looking at the detail and trying to get capture that with nice sharp defined hatching kind of stone there. Now this we've got this in dark so Let's just do some vertical lines on this one. Maybe just change them up a bit like that. Angle them just a tad. That gives that nice kind of rock. I can, as I say, I can always come back in. And uh, strengthen them up. Make it darker if I want to. I don't normally go for images of low contrast like this. I usually like a, a lot of contrast. So, um, a bit different. Now, this one in the back, I've not got any detail on at all. This one in the foreground, I'm just going to kind of try and detail it up a little bit. Change the colour. Like 
that's a bit and then just redefine these lines stronger lines in the foreground it pushes that other stuff back a little bit quite like this strong blue I could put some of this on there it's coming we're getting there so I'll speed it up again and just carry on uh, with this etching over the old other thing and, and then we'll take it to the next stage That's the initial uh, pencil work done. You can see I've followed the contours of all of the rocks to get them in. I've varied the colors a little bit. And what I'm doing now, I'm just taking the eraser and I'm actually using, I've just turned my stylus upside down. I'm, I'm on the uh, bottom color layer. I'm just sort of lifting out some of these highlights. In fact, I might be better using the eraser to be honest. Um, then I can have a smaller, smaller brush. And just put in a, a few. I'm just lifting out colour there. A bit bigger brush as well. Oh, it's raining. I don't know if you can hear that. All of a sudden the ovens have opened. Yeah, that gives a nice effect. And uh, just, just going around where I think we need a few more highlights. 
thinking I'm just going back to this pencil layer I'm just gonna take some of that out as well oh, I got a bit too much pencil work in there that's it I just wanted to I did that up a little bit some highlights going in there Here, just again redefining real small brush and, and drawing a, a few lines. A sort of textured effect going off here. I guess it's shadows off the trees. Certainly adds dimension to the to the rocks. Uh, definitely over it. Look at this. We've got this going up as well. I don't know whether to put more um, onto that layer. There's some of that colour out as well. I don't know whether to put more watercolour into this or not. I just lift the colour out underneath. It's that kind of a nice random effect there. Back to the bottom layer. If if I try and lift colour out and it doesn't come off, I know it's on the uh, layer. I've got two layers of colour. I could merge them down actually. But having said that, I like that the way that when I lift it, uh, we get the the, the underlying colour showing. And if I merge them down, we'd lose that. But that's not very good, is it? That's not too cool. I'm going to redefine that pen. I might just do that. Now, while I think about it, uh, I might forget in a bit. I'll just change that edge up a bit. That's better. Gives me a nicer shape, rock. So, um, that's the highlights done, and the initial pencil work. I'm going to create another layer on the top of all of these. I've, I've actually turned off the lot layer uh, on most of them so I can just keep uh, popping in between them and hopefully I won't um, crash and burn <laughs> and uh, paint on the wrong layer but we'll see so I'm now looking instead of at shapes I'm looking at shadows and I'm sketching in shadows and I could do this with with paint uh, might be easier to do it with paint actually. Uh, no, I'm going to stick with the pencils because I said it was going to be a pencil drawing. But if you wanted to have a go and do it with paint, then you know uh, that would be a, a lot quicker. Uh, that was the only reason I was thinking of it. It's uh, you know, what I'm like, I'd, I, I, I'm not, I've got a lot of patience so very quickly. Um, lose patience with things and want to move on to something else. It's auto saving like that. Just, uh, I wonder if I could like thicken up the brush a little bit. Maybe I don't know. I'm looking at these darks and thinking, right, we need to get nice dark colours. And for me, purples always do it. With a cross hatching. And this is starting to 
give it the depth I'm looking for. Uh, kind of need to add a line in there. I'm going to, I'm going to invent a rock split in there. Just want to add that a bit to now what I'm going to do here. I want, we see how we've got those sort of grassy vines growing down this I'm going to patch right the way across and then just go to the eraser and then just lift them out again the same technique as with a watercolour but I'm doing it with etching instead I think I need to bring some colour into this. It's all looking a bit dreary. I'll zoom in. Let's see what we're getting. Getting all these. It does look like it's used. Uh, I wonder, just as an experiment, I've just applied that colour. What happens if I take some water just apply a little bit of water over here I wonder if it's going to merge those colors together because it is a watercolor pencil just a little bit of an experiment so I'll put water on are they gonna go together probably not but I had a new colour, is that gonna that runs a lot? Wonder if that's a technique I should be employing. Hmm. Tempting, isn't it? Tempting. Very tempting. Now I've just put those lines on. Just add a bit of water. Let's see if it will. Um... Blend those together. Yeah, well, look, yes, it does. And it runs obviously. I'm just going to take the tilt off just a little bit. I don't want it to run quite as much as that. Because these are watercolor. I am trying to emulate watercolor pencils. I could use lighter coloured pencils as well, actually. Are they going to work? I can't see. I tend not to. Good, they work how you'd expect. Getting some colour bleed and stuff going off. Just gonna uh, just take that out a little bit. There we go. Leave the other one in. Just try to add little bits of variety of colour. All the time, if you notice, I'm still trying to follow 
the rock face. Building this up a lot now. Let's add some more colour. I want it to look like black. Uh, like, you know, black pencil shaded over the top of it. I want to really want to try and, and get some colour going off. We've done that a bit. Lift that out. And we've got that bit going off there. So I can put some lines in just here. This. Looking well. So um, that's all bled together now. Look. You can tip the uh, the sorry. You can um, just dab your the tip of your brush into water to soften it. Um, so we could sort of like add water to our pencil. See what effect that has. Overlaying. Colors. I'm trying all of these techniques because we're in, you know, uh, rebel. So I could have done just sort of a pencil drawing over the watercolor wash, which you then potentially could have done in Critter, Art Rage, you know, any app, Procreate or anything. But only Rebel offers this feature where we can have this sort of smudgy water thing going off. There, look. So that's why I'm doing it like that. Got to be careful that um, we don't sort of get a tree that looks like it's transparent so I think I'm going to go into this bottom layer just lift out some of the color behind the tree obviously you cannot do that if it was a conventional watercolor I'd be lifting off all of that uh, Use a mop and just put some brown in there. It'd be quick. That's quick. Ah. Just change the size of it a bit. Mix some of these dark colours in here. And on this green. Pull that up a bit. Bit up here. Yeah, it just adds a bit. I can these there and just just go in. Maybe on this layer as well. Lift a few highlights out of that color wash underneath, just to give this a bit of a, a bit of depth, really. There we are. Backwards and forwards. In the auto save again. I think we need to be oh, sort of an inch. Round two, line of two. I could be doing shading as well. Can you take this? I don't have to go in for an actual pencil 
do shading. Back to that purple. Got some green, like like a, a lime, well, a very pale green actually, going off down here. Those on. If I create a new layer, I wonder if it will actually. Yes. It's quite a pace, more like using uh, gouache, I suppose. Just adds that little bit. I can start adding lighter lines as well. So this would be like using uh, gouache. It just sort of adds, I think that adds a lot to the texture. It's looking quite nice now. Putting in these lighter lines. I like that. That means I can also sort of go in with this sort of lime green and some light lines up here. Be yellow, perhaps. So I've got two. Now I've got two layers going. One this layer. In fact, let's rename them then. You'll see uh, it'll. Um, I'll put light lines, dark lines. Then you'll be able to see um, exactly how I'm working. So if I'm etching with the dark lines, I'll be on that layer, and the light lines over the top of it. So I can come in and. I think we need some light lines definitely here. That's cool. Touching over that dark stuff. Maybe warm it up a bit. Like that. Right, back to my darker stuff. Go back to my dark layer. This is going to be tricky to um, try and remember what layer I'm on all the time. So I think it's time to speed it up again because again this is going to be a long slow uh, process and uh, I've given you an insight into the techniques I'm going to be using so I'll be back I'll be back shortly
Right, I'm happy with all of the uh, darks and tones. I've, if you look close, I've got the darkest tones around the uh, waterfall to sort of draw your eye to that. I erased all of that out. I didn't look dead messy and I just made it a lot cleaner. Uh, I put a little few highlights in the water. And what I'm doing now, I'm just sort of looking and adding um, on this light layer, I'm just adding sort of local color just to brighten the old thing up. I'm looking at the uh, source photo and thinking, right, we've got some mosses on there. Let's put them on there. Maybe down here as well. Because this is darker, I can actually put some lighter colors in there. Look quite nice. Notice I'm just letting it all um disappear at the top i'm not worried too much about that i'll put a little bit of etching in it here just the odd little bit maybe that it just sort of explains why though you can't see the tops of those trees it's the foliage there too yeah and i'm just sort of now having a lot of fun thinking i want some moss here let's get some in there lighter there catching the tip of that uh, I've totally simplified these massively we could have some moss there I think we could uh, a bit of lighter moss on that as well I'm just going to go back to my darker layer just for a little and just add a little bit of dark under there. I think it needs it. That's it. I could then go back to my light layer. Almost got a white here. I think I need another light layer. Got a bit there, maybe, I don't know. I'm just wondering if I'm overdoing it. I, I, I want to keep, yeah, I don't like that. Let's delete that layer. I need to keep it a bit simpler than that. Uh, I don't know where if I can do much more. I think I want to add a little bit of blue into the water. It all looks a bit brown and sludgy. I know it's brown in the photo, but I just feel like I need, for me, just want to see a, a few flicks of blue. Just the odd line. Do I need to define this a bit more? Around here. Do that with the eraser actually. Hmm. Kind of like these reds. I'm listening to the rain batting on the window and I love 
absolutely love the rain, you know. And uh, I prefer the, the, the rain to a sunny day. Uh, when I tell people that, I think I'm crazy. But I just think the light is so much more exciting when it's raining. You look at the uh, rooftops and the glistening with the rain. Same as the pavements, you know. Just boring and grey on a sunny day. Okay, you get nice shadows and stuff, but I just love the effect uh, that rain makes. Should be green, really. I'm getting a bit. Um, I'm getting a bit over anxious with or over zealous with detail again I just want to I may have to go in with a pencil you know I'm just going to take a regular pencil create a new layer I'm going to call this pen this pencil because the watercolor does diffuse a little bit and, and I do want to use kind of a really dry, sharp edge. Pencil, why is that not working? Zoom in. Maybe it is. Maybe I need to put the size up a bit. <laughs> not quite that much. better yeah I just want to uh, pick the edge of this out a bit should really do it more color than that I want to just undo that and go back to warmer color to define the edge a little bit I might do some a bit more detailed pencil work with this now I can see well now looking at this I can see uh, my original sketch was like way off the mark uh, should I correct it I think I should because I think the real sh the original shape is way nicer Let's go back to there. Sort of like that. Don't know what that layer is. It's on there. Get that pencil out. Do. Well, that was my original pencil work. Um, pick this sort of round color up out of there. Just, just uh, go back to the watercolors. Pick up the mop brush. Just doing a bit of repair work on this, really. Set them on the wrong layer. Can I get that off? That's it. That's the layer I want to be on. Just take the eraser. Add it up a bit off there. Go back to my dark lines. Two. See if I can get this purple color. Oh, missed it. Is it not letting me pick a color? I don't know what's happening now. I'm pressing Control and Alt, 
and it's not letting me select color. I don't know why that is. Uh, ah, here we are, back in business. Did I get it? I didn't get it. needs to be up here a bit that's it just patch that in a bit now this juts out way too far but this is because I changed the composition at the beginning I'm okay with that now I can uh, go Am I using, I want the pencil, go back to my pencil layer now. For a minute there, I thought I was on the pencil. I can just. Bring that in there a bit. There we go, and I can add some pencil work on here. But mind you, I tried this before and I didn't like it. So maybe shouldn't I just want that a bit thicker I think yeah not too bad I quite like that and it's kind of doing this funky thingy a lot almost like water has caused that to erode away with these lines and they come down here like this and that Yeah, that's cool. And then I like the idea. I see them here as well. So don't forget, I'm just using a pencil now. Putting a bit of detail. This is crazy for me. I don't normally like going mad like this that kind of stuff all that good stuff bits of detail down here I catch the top of them rocks Uh, I'm liking the pencil. Uh, I really am. Can really go in. Uh, 
add some quite strike quite a strong colour. So this is this was an experiment really, you know, I'm just sort of exploring Rebel uh, and seeing what I can get out of it. It it you know, it's how you learn the tools. And this app, I have to say, more than any other I've ever used is the actual skill that you apply or the techniques you apply. Um affect the outcome much more you you seem to have total control of where you can go and what you can do with the materials and the brushes and i think it's the way that the paint reacts on the paper you learn yeah it's a learning process where you're learning to control those um the tools and and the paint on the canvas very much like painting with traditional materials much more so than any other app ever uh, i've used most apps you'd like think i want a technique uh, i want an effect so you find a brush that does that effect and it kind of does it the same every time you apply it but um with rebel you you sort of I don't know just the, the 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 old application of the paper you choose the water that is applied the way you use it you've got a lot more scope somehow kind of trying to get these rocks that are under the water here in um and i guess we need I need to think about the shadows as well. It's the highlights. And that's where I'm going wrong. See, we've got this shadow coming under here. This shadow is nowhere near dark enough. It's my uh, purpley colour. Which means this will be in shadow, won't it? Now I've got that in shadow. I can bring that over there like that. Do I put another rock in just here? Like this and actually tin. Uh, and then put an highlight on it. Well, it's so much easier just using um, pencil. Perhaps I should have got it with that straight from the beginning. You wouldn't get that highlight like that.
I'm just fiddling. I think we need this sort of dot here. I guess it's all about the details what I'm working on now. It just throws this rock forward a little bit and adds a bit more definition to this. shadow here here yeah. but I'm not using dark colors because I want to keep the darkest for around that waterfall using greens nice find that a bit as well it's coming it's, we're getting there I'm liking it I'm liking it a lot um, got under here put some shadows under this side Just going to fast forward it again now because uh, i can see me spending a, quite a bit more time on this and i'm just going over it adding color and little bits of detail so i don't want to bore you too much
right so i am right at the very end of the painting i'm very happy with it how it's come out oops apart from that little bit <laughs> i'm happy with how it's come out uh so what i did just to recap watercolor washers on there then i tried to use a lining uh, brush watercolor brush to keep that kind of watercolor effect in the pencils and then finally to get the detail i had to succumb and use an actual pencil colored pencil to come up with this sort of sketch of a little waterfall full scene of a, a picture that i got off uh pixel bay link in the description for that of course uh, if you want to follow along with me uh, and i uh i was going to say i suggest you watch the old video first before you start because i've made lots of mistakes but um that could be too late <laughs> if you've actually already done it i just need to sign this what i want to do is um merge all the layers together do this merge layers i'm going to do them all or do i have to actually physically select them all i think i do merge layers because i'm not going to do anything else to this now i'm just going to shuffle it up a little bit make it more center on the paper my pencil um and so i shall sign it here here we go yeah so rebel with colored pencils watercolor washes little uh waterfall scene and i've kept all those brush marks in pencil marks I've got thicker marks over this side but that's because they're in the foreground and i thought if i use thicker lines in the foreground it pushes everything back uh, with the thinner lines in the distance so i really hope you've enjoyed this video if you have big thumbs up as always is much appreciated and if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing i've got lots of videos like this and i would love to be sharing them all with you so don't forget everybody stay safe stay sane keep painting hopefully i'll see you all in the next one bye